I want to talk some Texans with you because over the weekend, offensive guard and three-time Pro Bowler Larry Warford was cut by the Saints. John McClain's reporting that the Bears and Texas both have interests, but the challenge is the cap flexibility. So just a month ago, you and I were talking about how much cap space the Texans had to work with, but now, specifically after the DeAndre Hopkins trade, the Texans have over 15 million committed to just the running back position alone, 11 of which is for David Johnson by himself. Meanwhile, Carlos Hyde is still on the market. He might get less than $3 million on the open market. J.D. Clowney is still a free agent. He might have to settle for just a one-year prove-it deal. Is it just me, or does the DeAndre Hopkins deal continue to look worse and worse? You just trying to sprinkle a little sunshine and move on? <laughs> $7 million can be freed up by cutting Zach Fulton. As a football move, very simple. It's not personal, Zach Fulton. It's business. You cut him, earmark those $7 million for the Larry Warford Fund. This, I think, goes to, in part, why the Deshaun Watson extension need not happen this offseason and maybe cannot happen uh, mathematically for the Texans this offseason. As we also addressed previously, J.J. Watt at $15.5 million is rather expensive for a guy who plays half season. He'd be $17.5 million a year down the road. But David Johnson... And Duke Johnson, that's $15 million of non-Pro Bowl running back being played at a beyond Pro Bowl level. It's ridiculous. If this were accounting, it would be considered some bizarre form of cooking the books at your own detriment. Now, I would say that if there are the San Francisco 49ers, as mentioned by some, is also in play for Larry Warford. If the money's close, why would you choose to play for Bill O'Brien and the Texans if the 49ers want you? But the Texans cap has been mismanaged, if not outright mangled this offseason. And with no first or second round draft picks in 2021, they're set up for a future salary cap bloodbath. Let's talk about the ramifications of that, because Bet MGM has the Texans at plus 4,000 to win the Super Bowl. That puts them in the same company as the Falcons and Bears. Meanwhile, their division rivals like the Colts and the Titans, they have better odds. So, Charlie, after burning all that cap room we were just talking about and then trading away even more draft equity during this offseason, are the Texans really worse than they were last year or is it splash back from the Hopkins trade and all the negative feedback? Well, I think we can open with the Hopkins move. The Texans offseason nets out that relative to meaningful competition in the AFC, they've gotten worse. Doesn't guarantee that it plays out that way, but their best player is no longer on the team. Deshaun Watson's their most important player by far, and they're tethered to him to have hopes of anything in the foreseeable future. But Deshaun Watson's not a top three NFL quarterback, right? DeAndre Hopkins is their best player. They traded him away for 40 cents on the dollar and the cap issues that come uh, with David Johnson. It's awful. I think the Colts, it's a bet on Phillip Rivers to still have something in the tank, and he doesn't need to be great to be an upgrade over Jacoby Brissett. Uh, that is why the Colts at this point have the better odds than do the Texans. Uh, the Titans will see. I mean, there's a momentum sense, I guess, that, hey, they were in the AFC Championship game. Well, they were also 9-7 and seven and barely made the playoffs. Ryan Tannehill now going to be a, a near superstar level quarterback, or did he have the greatest two months of his football life and uh, water finds its level over time and Ryan Tannehill settles back down? But there is no fundamental reason to be optimistic about the Texans' chances of making a move on greatness, on Super Bowl caliber play in 2020. Their chances of making it back to the playoffs? Well, they added one more team in each conference to the playoffs, so just getting to the postseason but not being a real Super Bowl threat – would be even a less meaningful achievement for the Texans than it has been over the four times in five years. They've won one of those cute little AFC South Division championship banners.